just want to lay down and rest. What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome back to another episode of TV Talk, where Luke is here to sleep. I am kind of tired, but uh, I'm very excited. Yeah, because we're talking about Lord of the Rings. We're talking about Lord of the Rings. Freaking Lord of the Rings! Lord of the Rings. I'm just happy that we live in a world where we can talk about Lord of the Rings for like six weeks straight. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty it's great. Good. It's a good time to be alive. That's a world I'd mm-hmm. like to live in. Yeah, yeah. Much more frequently. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, today we are here to talk about episode five called Partings. Um, this is a, will be a spoiler field discussion. Luke, your feet all free over there now? Yeah. He's representing the, shoes the, off. He's I'm representing the, the Harfoots. I'm the local Harfoot. <laughs> free of them dogs. <laughs> Gotta get this um, bike stanky. Yeah, if you haven't watched any of the s- series or this episode and you want to avoid spoilers, come back at 8.30 and we'll be talking about other things. Um, but for now, we're going ahead, moving ahead full steam, full of spoilers. What do you guys think of a, about episode five? I, I mentioned it before this, uh, before we, we sat down to record, and I just said I wish... I, my review this week is, I liked this episode, it was good, but just, let's get to next week. Mmm, <laughs> yeah. They need to, I can't decide if I like the little teasers at the end or not. <laughs> Sometimes they do what this one did to me, and it's like, oh, next week's gonna be crazy. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong there. But I did like it. I thought it was a good episode. My gripe with it is just is like, I'm enjoying the music, and it's just like, next week on yeah. Lord of the Rings. It's like, no! <laughs> Especially the song this week, man. I'm... Dude. That was awesome. The fact that it was like, it bookended the episode, kind of. So I was cool. not prepared to be emotionally <laughs> like torn apart that early on in the episode. And then by the end, I was like, okay, this is a nice, hap- this is a happier version of it. <laughs> Yeah, it was, that was cool though. It was a good, mm-hmm. like, really good song. Yeah, it's I think it's just called Wandering, Wandering Way. Wandering Way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so freaking good. It was good, man. Oh my gosh! Like no lie, I was sitting there with tears in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> in- instant goosebumps. But as as everyone I'm sure who watches or listens to this and you guys know, the Harfoots are my favorite part of the show. And so the fact that we got a nice little emotional thing with them and the stranger at the beginning made me very, very happy. And of course left me wanting more. But at this point, I've come to realize that the Harfoot story is like the the fourth on the priority list. <laughs> yes. They're just there for the Gandalf reveal whenever that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Watch something like mind blowing is gonna happen that you're not even expecting. You're I gonna... love it. Well, Please. Like, well, before we dive too far, what what were your just impressions, your thoughts? Did you like it? Yeah, dislike it. I think for me, a little bit like you, Tyler. It. I don't know if it's if it really felt like a filler episode, but it. There's definitely some treading of water. There's on certain storylines. There's yeah. some treading of water. I loved all the stuff with um, Elrond and. And Durin, yeah, I think that continues to be the strongest storyline. Um, I thought a lot of the Numenor stuff felt unnecessary, especially with where they ended last week. Um, it was really just we're gonna get Hal Brand on board. Yeah, other than that, there was and there wasn't a lot more, more there. More of the treading water, um, and we have to get Isildur to yeah where he needs to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the stuff in the Southlands I thought was fine. It was. Not a lot. It was pretty small. This it was week. pretty small, but yeah. it, there was that like, okay, we're having this, we're having the divide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no. Overall, I think it was. I think it was a fine episode. I, I still don't think. I think my criticism from last week, where I, I don't necessarily feel like they've earned all of the conflicts that they're playing with. Um, some of those still have don't feel earned, but at the same time, I that where we ended here. Going to war, it does kind of finally feel like we're kicking into full steam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I really liked it. Um, I, I don't have, I feel like just in general for the entire show, as many nitpicks as you guys. Yeah. Which, I'm a nerd. I'm a lore nerd, so I'm going to have more nitpicks yeah. than anyone Especially else. compared to <laughs> Brett. I, I mean, say, I haven't really had too many. Um, I, like I don't, I don't have I've the baggage given. Brett does with knowing a lot. I know very little. <laughs> 
and I think Good that helps. Be. Yeah, I think it helps Can me enjoy be. it a lot more. Um, cause I, I didn't really have those issues this week cause it, mainly with Numenor that you guys did. Mm. Um, I enjoyed seeing Gladriel interact with the people a little bit, mainly the soldiers. That was, that was um, a great part of that storyline this week. One of my probably weaker things with the show just has been how brand in general, mainly because he's been this like fake everything's okay, I got a smile on my face kind of guy. And he kind of just kind of laid it out this week to Gladriel. Like, I'm tired of you. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad he made a choice to actually help for once instead of just, like, Gladriel speaking for me. Mm, yeah. Um, so I really like that. Um, I also, I will say the Numenor stuff, I really liked the conversation. F- Fal- Far- Farzan... Farazon? Farazon has with his son yeah, about why he's like kind of playing both sides of the coin here. Like, yeah, Some like I'm showing craft. sympathy, but like at the same time we can use this politically mm-hmm. to yeah. expand our empire, essentially. he's mm-hmm. he's He is ready to empire build. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. the diplomat, for sure. Yeah. So. Um, I, I don't really like the actor that plays his son, though. Oh, I don't I, think is I don't think his son's. He's gonna be dead next week anyway, probably, <laughs> uh, or soon. He's he's a non impactful character, it seems like. So it's it's really nothing. Um, but yeah, the Elrond endurance stuff is really what satisfied me the most because to me their entire thing was I have a secret. Now I have a secret. No, I have a secret. I have a secret. And today Elrond was like. Dude, they used me too. Like, let's just work together. Yeah. And I really appreciated that. I think the, the Durin and Elrond thing, like, I like that they kind of moved past that pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah they but didn't I, linger on it. But what I also love about their their stuff is I think those two characters have the most charisma in the they show. They are so good and so, together, like, when yeah. they're on the screen, it's just really enjoyable to watch. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. You know, because there's other parts of it where you're like, oh, this is kind of sad, or... Oh, here's mm-hmm. this political drama, or and then with them, it's like you get this really interesting story about the, these two races, as well as you get like good buddy cop comedy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just works so well. The, those two are great. I'm with you. I think they're my favorite to be with at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've I've enjoyed that stuff. I also love the the bit about the table. Yeah, so <laughs> so good. He's totally played him. So good. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's such a small thing, but I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. I thought it was like a real thing. It's it's one of those ways that I think the show can insert humor because so much of TV and movies today relies on kind of quippy humor. Mm-hmm. And it's a way to in, insert that humor, but still make it feel like it belongs in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Versus, you know, kind of the, not, not a, this is, wouldn't be a, the opposite of that, but another way I think they do that in a, in a way I don't enjoy as much is the thing with, like, when Galadriel fights the soldiers. It's like, oh, it's funny because she's beating their butts, Booties. right? Like, she's kicking their ass. So, like, and that's kind of funny, right? Because, yeah, the boys think they're so cool. I've seen that a hundred times. I saw it again this in uh, Game of Thrones this or House of the Dragon this week. Same exact scene, <laughs> just with different characters. Mm. <laughs> At this point, it's kind of a fantasy cliche. But <laughs> I, I should say, there's one joke that I feel like I laughed at that I don't know if I should have because I think it's kind of corny, but I loved it. And it's uh, when Isildur is apologizing to his friends. And he's like, he would have accepted it right away. And he's like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> yeah. just a quick. It's just like. <laughs> I don't know what the rest of the world felt about that, but it really caught me I, off guard I and it, it made me laugh. It felt like a real oh. friendship. Like yeah. these three guys have grown up with each other and they know each other well mm-hmm. enough to be there able was, to jab. There was some good humor. There was a pretty good intentional line in the, or unintentional humor line in this. <laughs> give me the meat and give me it raw. I was like, oh, whoa, <laughs> we're going there. <laughs> it's kind of like you hear it and you're like, oh, he actually said that. Yeah, this episode was actually pretty funny. Looking mm-hmm. back at it, mm-hmm. I'll let you hit me anywhere. Three hits. 
Two. Two. <laughs> oh, no! Just backing up. I like three. <laughs> I, think, I, I like that scene a lot, though. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we also got our first look at a new character. The head-shaped guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's in it for like two seconds. He yes, is. the... Uh, I think his... So this is what I was going to say I think they're earlier. called the mystics. This is what I was going to say earlier. You were talking about like the Harfoots are only there for the Gandalf reveal. Yeah. But then this seems like this will be kind of what makes their story relevant. Yeah. Outside of the Gandalf reveal sure. that we're going to get. Um, is whoever this group of people is. You said the mystics. I know nothing about them. I They're not... I, in the lore as far as I know. I'm literally just pulling that from... There's a... There's a track on the album, mm. on the music album, that's called the, the that's they... called the Mystics, and I just don't know who else that could be talking about. Gotcha. So it could be talking about someone else. I don't know. Oh, I like the way they look. They look. Yeah, cool. they have um, very. Uh, they stand out a lot. I'm <laughs> very curious to. They have kind of an evil vibe, but at the same time, like we, like you said, we just got a glimpse. We have no idea. We know they're that they're very interested in the strangers. The landing. symbol <laughs> on the back of one of their not shields but plate or whatever was the same star constellation that the stranger was looking for. So obviously they are very intentionally looking for him for whatever reason. Maybe they're more Mars, 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 yes, wizards. <laughs> <laughs> no <can't>. wizard area. <laughs> that word is hard for me to say. There, there are three other wizards, <laughs> but. No, yeah, I think that, I mean, they definitely have evil vibes, if I were to yeah, I was make get, a prediction. I was getting oh, bad vibes. Bad Mayar. vibes. Yeah. Yes, the wizards are Mayar. The Balrogs are Mayar. We do get to see a Balrog oh my in gosh. this episode. Yeah. What did you guys think about our little history lesson? I'm glad they tied the Mithril into the story in a way that makes sense. Yep. I agree. So I was like, man, are we just going to have this or be a thing? Uh, yes, it's a thing, and it's an important thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It fits within what they're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. But we also got to see the and it was and, awesome. And just not even on a story point, but just the cinematography in the show is awesome. And that shot in particular of the elf and the tree and the Balrog is just like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm going to see this one on Twitter a lot. And, <laughs> and I do. Oh well, yeah, and for multiple reasons, it's it's an, one of those things that's been invented for the show, um, that a lot of lore purists are upset about. Ah, uh, the purists, the purists cry about it. Um, Sorry, it's only I think and I'll and I'll just say this: I think it's only really important to a lot of people because of how important the Silmarils are. Like the fact that they use the Silmaril as a plot point. I if it had just been something else if anything else i think that it would have been they could have gotten away with it without anyone complaining about it um that said i do also think that you know uh elrond straight up calls this like a apocryphal tale like it could it might not be true Mm -hmm. um it may just be one of those things that it's kind of like oh this is an explore an explanation for mithril that we really like that some people like and it ties into the bigger world, and they could leave it at that. And it might not even be true. Like, you could dismiss it as, it's just a thing. It's just a, it's just a tale. But I'm pretty sure they're going to go digging, and yeah, they're going to find Mr. It. Balrog down there. Oh, just no, like for sure. Munching they're on tying, the tree stump. <laughs> like... they're, t- they're tying it together. They're tying it together. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we get a little more explanation from... Uh, Celebrimbor about why Mithril is important. Gilgalad. Do and the king? Well, I guess they both kind of talked to oh, yeah, 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 yeah. to Elrond about it. And I really appreciate how Elrond was able to kind of stick to his that was moral awesome. compass. Last week we were all like, he's just gonna go back home and tell him like, oh, there's a Mithril. Yeah, because yeah. even the teaser trailer it looked like that was yeah. gonna be what he's he did. Stuck yeah. to his guns, which was awesome. Yeah. It was very nice. He chose friendship. Let's go. <laughs> it's important, yo. Friendship and Lord of the Rings being important? No way. Um, <laughs> but I can carry you. <laughs> we also get um, near the beginning. We haven't talked that much about Adar is back. Yeah. 
he gets to bask in the sun, and he's a little remorseful that he's maybe going to be gone soon. <laughs> yeah. I liked how they just they showed an orc burning. Just like, hold your arm out. Yeah. Just, let's just watch these boils form. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I... Like, I really like Adar. I, for how little he's in this show, I find him very threatening. Mm-hmm. Especially when the human, the Southland human, the, so- the Southlanders, the the mi- yes, them, uh, they come and they like bow down before him. I don't eat, did he even say anything? He just like choke slammed that guy. Yeah, as soon as he like, mentioned Sauron, he's like, choke slam. It's like, <laughs> blood is the only yeah. price we accept. Like, the only binding thing is blood. Or yeah. The only binding oath is blood. I I just think they did a really good job with him of establishing him and him as just like a threat. Yeah, the design of his look, the costume. And just the little bit they give him, I agree. They do a good job of setting him up to be a menacing kind of mini boss type level person, mm-hmm. which is nice. And how I think this goes to the writing and, and the acting, but how the orcs interact with him. Mm-hmm. They have a reverence for mm-hmm. him. They have a respect um, and a fear, I think, rightfully so. And uh, yeah, then when he kind of calls on Waldrig to. You want to make this oath? Kill the boy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, lord, oh, oh dear. Mm-hmm. We're not showing it, but whew, we know what's happening there. Yeah, I do. I do like Adar a lot, and I, I think that side of the that that side of that story is mm-hmm. more interesting than the human side of that story right now. Yeah, kind of the creation of Mordor side of it is, mm-hmm. is really interesting. I'm really curious how that little battle is going to go. Because it looks like they're going to let them come up and just drop a tower tower on them. them. Yeah. I'm also, sorry, also really interested in that little shrine thing. Yeah. That the the hilt is a key to. A key, yeah. Um, There goes my theory that it was going to be the ore for their wing. (laughs) That's okay. I'll accept it. Yeah. It was a long shot. (laughs) I was kind of, I was like, oh, they're like at it. Just open it up. Maybe that's where we get our Sauron reveal. They open it up and he's just like, yo, what up? Thanks for letting me out. I think <laughs> All bad. what they're implying there is that this is a this is this is a depiction of what needs to happen, but it's not right there. Mm-hmm. Like, they need to take my, pre- you know, where I guess we can start talking about predictions to some degree. But like, my prediction is that they use that to and this, I hate this wording, unlock, but it's a key, unlock Mount Doom and oh. start the volcanic Damn process. <laughs> yeah, the ash and the smoke. And I think that's what it's a key to. Would you dislike that? If Not necessarily, but I don't... You'd be like, oh, okay. It's... it's, it's uh... There would need. I think there needs to be at least a little bit of explanation on how it works. Um, you know, only Sauron doesn't just have complete control over natural elements, right? Like he can't mm-hmm. just be like volcano on. So, however, that magic because we've we've gotten very little magic in this show thus far, but we did get some this week. But we did get some, yeah. Um, and we're and we're getting a little more each week, but explaining. A little bit of how that works, I think, is going to be necessary for me to appreciate it and not feel like it's just a, we got to get this party started. I think it's the battle is going to be happening. They're going to start to feel like they're losing and Theo is going to be like, I'm going to open this door. (laughs) He's going to open it and it's all going to go south. Makes it even worse. Yeah. Well, you mentioned magic. The stranger did use some magic this week. He's a wizard! He messed up his forearm pretty good. He shoot right. he you shall not pass those dogs. Yeah, he did. <laughs> it, you know you know Ooh, what that tells need, me? Need a staff. That man needs a staff. <laughs> need a staff. We are we are talking about this before. He's gonna he's gonna get his staff so he can not injure himself that during was magic. My immediate thought. It's like, yeah. He just needs a thing to channel him. Yeah. Get that <laughs> guy a stick. <laughs> but we we do it is interesting because we do kind of end 
the, our time with that group with Nori and the stranger with her being afraid of him now under like, now the mystics are gonna show up there's and... like oh maybe he I mean I think she always understood that maybe he is a little bit peril but like that realization is maybe now more real um and I think that's intentional with him addressing that at the beginning I I peril no you're here to help <gasps> boom <laughs> And he did, but then also... Ice Blast! <laughs> he's got powers that you should be afraid of. Yeah, I think that kind of is one of the things I didn't like. Mm-hmm. Like, I get that, you know, he in accidentally hurts her or whatever. Um, but it just goes back to their, like, every time you think that they might be good, they try to show you that he's not, maybe not. And I'm like, guys, we're, we're seeing through it at this point. Like, we recognize who this guy is. I'm, I'm a little kind of... And to that point in the show where I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't need more red herrings. Right. I don't right. need the back and forth. Like we, we, know. we need to establish <laughs> who we are at this point. Cause it is, there's four episodes left, right? Three. It's, is it nine or eight? It's eight. I thought it was nine. It's eight. There's three episodes left. Okay. Yeah. Then we, they definitely need to get moving on that. Unless they're saving that for the finale. But I definitely am with you. I it just, let's go. Yeah, let's let's move these characters yeah. along a little bit now. Which I think they, you know, Halbrand. I think they kind of did this week. That was kind of maybe his. We're getting him and Gladriel. We're they're going right. to go do their thing. We've got the Numenor. Um, luckily, it doesn't look like we're going to get much more friction yeah. between Elrond and Durin. Still got to worry about but Daddy Durin, Daddy Durin, and uh, Celebrimbor and Gilgalad. That's all still up in the air. Mm. So, yeah, there's just there's a lot of unresolved things. I think just for three episodes, I'm hoping it doesn't feel too rushed. That's why he's Gandalf yeah. the Gray. He's in the gray zone. LOL. Yeah, the gray zone. I dig it. He's not a. He's not in Matt Damon's <laughs> green zone. I love for a reference. Um, something I'm really excited to see because I really like Isildur. <laughs> yeah. And I love his sense of adventure that he has right now, that he longs for with his friends. And we're going to have to watch all of his friends die, die. as he like goes on to become <laughs> King of Gondor. He's going to hurt so bad. I'm really excited to see that. Um, also, some little thing I noticed today. I noticed Rohan imagery in the Calvary. Yeah. So are... Does the Calvary go more northwest while they the Gondor folks, tree folks, stay by Mordor? So when, spoilers, potential spoilers, I suppose, for the future, um, when Gondor is formed from the descendants of Numenor, mm-hmm. there are two kingdoms. There's a northern kingdom, which is ruled by Elendil, um, the dad. And there's a southern kingdom, which is ruled by his two sons. The northern kingdom includes part of Rohan. Mm. And eventually, um, that group kind of forms their own country when everything mm-hmm. else is kind of falling apart. Okay. So, Because, like, they're all on the boats, and they all have Aomer's helmet. Yeah. And they all, and like... you notice their, their handles have... The, yeah. the pommels are horse horse heads. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're like it's like the horse riders of Numenor kind of end up in the area of Rohan and the. Um, Where was Lord... Numenor when the Westfold yeah. fell? That's all <laughs> I'm saying. So so yeah, th- I mean it's that's a really Luke. I'm super glad you picked up on that. It's it's kind of a fascinating little east not not even Easter egg, but just a nice tie in to what mm-hmm. will eventually happen. So, yeah. I can't wait. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Any other uh, predictions here as we... I guess my prediction is that the, the sword key... <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're a game with sword keys. Um, is, is not an actual, like, physical key to a door. Oh. It may be more magic or maybe, like, mind-based... My other little prediction would be like only like a Maiar could use it. That's why mm. maybe Sauron would want it. Yeah, it's like. But then I mean, then Theo is all like. <laughs> well, maybe Theo can. Theo's use a Maiar, it, <laughs> but he can't unlock the full power of it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 
So M- mainly, my prediction is it's not a normal key. Sure. Yeah, but I don't really fully don't believe if, in that one. Though. <laughs> I don't know if this like fits within the world of Lord of the Rings, but could it be that a part of Sauron is stuck in it? Or part of his powers. It was a it? it was a ring test. It shouldn't be at this point. <laughs> okay. Um, Sauron should. I use the words should because I again they're kind of playing fast and loose with timelines, and I'm not sure exactly how there they're was condensing things. There was definitely a moment in this episode where I was like, "What is happening with the timeline stuff?" Yeah. When Hellbrand's talking, and they yeah, showed him I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I think that was more just visually like they're just doing what we already did. Yeah. Right. Like they're right. doing it again. That's these well, ding dong self leaders <laughs> can't make well, decisions. That's what I gathered by the end of it, but like when it happens at first, I was like, "Wait a minute." Mm-hmm. What? but then like as it plays out you're like oh okay this yeah is not really it. yeah i definitely like kind of stopped from i was like oh brett nice you also <laughs> well i i also still struggle with the fact that like some of what he's saying which still makes me suspicious about him as maybe yes. being sauron yes. doesn't quite add up with where things are at and i yeah he's out of my my overall prediction is still that Sauron has not been revealed, but he's suspect number one. Hundred <laughs> percent. Exactly what I said to Dana after the episode last night. Like almost word for word. Yeah. I don't think he's in the show yet, but I do think if if he is, it's it's Halbrand. If if they do go that way, my guess is that whatever this first outing is of Numenor is probably more just like a test of strength. He is gathering information on the Numenorians. Um, to figure out what at the same time, he's you know he's been messing with the elves. He's gonna walk into Numenor when all their folks leave and just will wipe them out. <laughs> yep. Like, no, I, I think he's <laughs> suspect anymore. one if they if they're in the show. If not, Sauron's not there yet. I, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, he's he's the ghost <clears throat> king. I still, I still like that. I still I stand by theory. that one. I love that theory, yeah. I don't know if I have any new uh, theories. I think that's probably the one that I keep coming back to. Cause yeah. The, the carrot they're dangling is Sauron, and, and everybody wants to know who he is. So, Sauron. I don't know. Do we Do we think... What's his name? Is it Saruman? We'll, we'll show up. We'll show this? up. Yeah. So, I actually thought the... The white person with their shaved head was going to be Saruman. Maybe. But I guess it's a, a, a girl? Uh, the actress. Yeah. It? So, I mean... Supposedly, so... I kind of threw that one out of the window. Yeah, I don't... M- my R are not necessarily... The only clue the only in my mind was because it was white hair. That the was... only shapeshifter I know of is Sar- uh, Sauron, so I... You know. Maybe they changed that. I don't know. Could be. Look, yeah. it's a whole new... <laughs> They're playing with things, so yeah. With with the mystics being in white, yeah, yeah. I think that definitely is a valid theory at this point because we have no idea who they are. I'm interested to see what they bring. Yeah, same. I'm 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 Seems... sad that we're only gonna be able to talk about this for like another three weeks, and then we're gonna have to wait like <laughs> another year. Yeah, the IMDb episode <sighs> guide says nine, so that's why I thought there was nine episodes. Now I'm sad. Maybe yeah. there'll be a surprise episode like with Sandman. Be cool. Depending on what it is. <laughs> How they end it. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh, real quick, JT's uh, theory <clears throat> over in the chat. <clears throat> My theory is season one isn't for me. <laughs> oh, that's not a theory, JT. That's just a, that's just an opinion. <laughs> Congratulations, you figured that out. Uh, so bummed by the show so far. Just not what I wanted, I guess. I'm curious. I think because... It's not what I expected, but I'm not completely disappointed. I think that they've had some missteps, uh, like I said before, in, in some of the conflicts and maybe being a little too uh, secretive about things, trying to keep too many cards you know, in their sleeve. Um, but at the same time, I think what probably you and I are really excited for is probably season two. Mm-hmm. And Luke and I were kind of talking about this beforehand. Uh this season, everyone's kind of apart, far away. Things aren't really set in motion yet. These, this is the, uh, this is, this is. See, I think season one is way more set up than we expected. Yeah. Like it's mostly set up, and really, the show doesn't really get started until season two, 
Which I think is crazy. <laughs> I think these next... That's a crazy pitch to me. I think but... these next three episodes will do a lot to move us there. Oh, yeah. for sure. It's going to be... Sure. I think these next three are going to be like a but three-part movie. As soon as we... Yeah, I think as soon as we really get the ball moving, I think we're going to have characters who are close in proximity. We're going to get those more personal interactions, personal conflicts that I think are so interesting um, to... TV viewers in general these days. I think mm. in general people demand more out of TV mm-hmm. and what you can get out of, you know, personal character growths yeah. and stories. We haven't even gotten like the fellowship together. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> the dinner hasn't even ended in the Hobbit is right. where the story is. Right. We're we're, so. we're kinda at the like we're at <laughs> Bree. We're like Aragorn yeah. has grabbed them and freaking like, Gandalf saw somewhere doing something. <laughs> He's taking them, and we've got because we've got Numenor and Gladriel and that group mm-hmm. kind of going. So, anyways, they're setting it in motion. They're setting it in motion, and and definitely still very excited to see what they do at the end of this uh, end of this season. It is unfortunate that like you kind of even have to say it is like oh well season two or like you'll have to just be patient with the show. Yeah, because obviously you want it to just click for like, go, go yeah. right away, and it, it's I can't like say that's a positive thing about the show um but also i don't hate it if there's if no, there's I just like do. there's a handful of properties i'm willing to be more patient with this is one of them absolutely so uh i'm willing to wait for season two for the, everything to really get going if i have to same yeah and i think we'll look back when this whole story is told and think of season one very differently than Probably. We yeah. Currently. yeah and i guess none of us have hated it no, so it's I'm not hating we're it just at coming at from a different perspective yeah. too. No, no I'm, I'm. We're just we're over here going just wait. <laughs> yeah, More I'm. I'm, rooms, I'm please. not here to sugarcoat anything. I'll certainly yeah. say that I have criticisms, but no, for sure I. I so don't. I'm it's perfect. It. You're just <laughs> the a perfect hater. show. You're just a hater, bro. 